Hey guys, welcome back to Four Towers Films, and today it is Friday, February 22nd, and it is your Young and the Restless recap for a day ahead in Canada. Stay tuned, it proves to be a good show. Let's get started. Mia is talking to Lola in her bed and confessing that it was her who who pushed her and she was injured because of it. She asked why was she wearing the coat and she never meant to hurt Lola. She was there to confront Abby and she didn't know what she was going to do. She says she knows she's hurt her brothers and hurt the family, but that's all going to change now. She's not going to do that anymore. As she's talking, Arturo has heard what she has said. Ray arrives home and he has his files with him. He opens up the files and he's thumbing through them and he sees a picture of the, of the crime scene. He sees a picture of an earring and he recognizes it. He goes into their bedroom and sees that it's Mia's earring. Billy said, Phyllis says she understands that people will be upset and that it will affect Jabot, the court case. And Billy goes off on her, basically telling the others that she cut a deal to save herself while the other women are going to go to prison for doing the exact same thing that Phyllis herself was did in the regards to JT. Phyllis and Billy argue back and forth a bit. And Kyle asking, you know, is that what happened at court? And Bill is saying she basically admitted to it and copped a deal to get out of it. So during their argument, Carrie steps in and says, you know, I came to this town to help rebuild Jabot, and I'm going to get back to doing that. Lauren says that's a good idea. What's best for the company? And both Lauren and Carrie leave. Kyle follow, follows along after them, and Phyllis wants to talk to Billy before he leaves. Arturo walks into Lola's room and asks Mia what's wrong, that he heard her sound like there's something wrong. Did Lola's condition change? Mia says, oh no, she was just apologizing for being really bad and the kind of person that she is that she hurt the family. And she says, you know, she just wanted to say that she's not going to do that anymore. She doesn't want to be that kind of person. Abby walks in and Mia says she's going to be different. She's not going to hurt Ray or Arturo anymore. And that she wanted Abby to know she apologized to her. And that she appreciates that Abby reached out to her when she did yesterday. That she was very kind to her. And that she should have been happy that they were getting married because, you know, they're family after all. They should be happy for each other. And that they're going to be very good for each other. Mia leaves the room and Arturo and Abby lean on each other. Phyllis tells Billy that the work environment is not the place to bring personal issues up. Billy says that... I got permission from the boss to bring up personal issues, and I'm going to. And basically saying, you know, the mother of my children is in prison because of you, where you basically just handed over the information that arrested the three other women, and they're going to prison while you're walking scot-free. Phyllis says she's not the one she was arrested as well. And he goes, yeah, here you are, scot-free. And he said he has to, he's going to leave. And she goes, what, are you going to quit? And he said, and leave you to run my family's company? No, I'm going to work from home, Victoria's home, because his kids think she's away on a business trip. He storms out, and Phyllis yells after him. She's not the reason they got arrested. Carrie and Lauren come back into Phyllis's office once Billy leaves and asks if she's okay. Phyllis says Billy was just venting because of single parenting right now, and that's difficult, and she can take it. 
Carrie says she shouldn't have to take it, and that she's there for her. She leaves after Phyllis thanks her. Lawrence sits down and says she's been there for her. You know, she can talk to her. They've been through a lot together. And Phyllis says she was just trying to give the other ladies a lifeline that the story that was circulating was not going to hold up and that she was helping them by giving the actual truth. Lauren says by being a witness for the prosecution and Phyllis said yes and asks will Lauren support her. Lauren says in the real world or in the business world and Phyllis says both and Lauren says well hopefully it turns out the way you hope it will and leaves the office. Kyle's at Crimson Lights and Abby walks in to pick up some food and drink for Arturo. Kyle asks how Lola is and Abby says there's been no change and Kyle still wants to go and see her for herself. Abby says it's not a good idea. Kyle wants Abby to talk to Arturo about letting him visit Lola and Abby says it's not a good idea right now. He's warmed up. He's exhausted. You know, just let it go. I will come. I can keep you updated and we'll talk to him later. And Kyle says, well, that's what you can do, but what can I do? And Abby says, you know, just relax and wait till Lola wakes up and then she can decide on her own visitors. Abby leaves and Kyle looks like he's got a plan and grabs his jacket and goes out the other door. Carrie shows up at the Abbott Mansion and Jack says, hi, it's really good to see you. And that's a nice surprise. Carrie goes, it is? Jack realizes they had a date and apologizes. And he goes, you must be upset with me. And she goes, oh, I'm very annoyed. And she leans over and kisses him. And he goes, oh, well, you know, I might have to annoy you more often. She holds his hand and pulls him over to the couch. And he goes, you know, it might not be the right message to send if you're annoyed. And she goes, oh, don't worry. And he said, you know, he feels bad because he doesn't have anything planned. And she goes, don't worry, I'm going to take care of everything. Pushes him on the couch and starts to take off her coat. Abby has gone back to the hospital and has brought Arturo his food, which he thanks her for. She asks again if Kyle might be able to see her. And Arturo says no because... He's worried that he doesn't know what they fought about and he doesn't want to upset Lola and she might hear him if in her uh, unconscious state and get upset. He doesn't want to do that. So Abby concedes and says, okay, she understands. He tells her he's going to step out for a little bit and get some air. Once he does that, Abby texts Kyle and says, no visits, and thank you for respecting Arturo's wishes. She sits down and fills Lola in on how the restaurant's doing, that the ventilation system's been fixed, that they added more storage to the walk-in freezer, and that this is her dream, and she's just the fairy godmother trying to help her realize it. And that she's going to take care of Arturo, too, because that's what sister-in-laws do. She's her fairy sister-in-law. Arturo comes back in and says he likes the sound of that. And Abby says to him, why don't we go step out and go to the cafeteria and get some real food. He doesn't want to go out and leave Lola alone. And Abby says we can let the nurses know where we'll be and they can text us if there's a problem. He agrees to it and they head to the cafeteria. Ray is walking around his apartment with a beer in his hand when Mia comes in, telling him that she just came from visiting Lola at the hospital and saying, you know, she just wanted to be there and to talk to her and see if she's okay and that it shouldn't be this way. She shouldn't be in the hospital. Ray tells her there's been a development in the case. Nick is at home and he's having a drink when Phyllis walks in and said, 
It's been a while since they've seen each other. She missed him because he got home really late and I guess he slept in the guest room. And he says, what do you expect from me right now? Nick confronts Phyllis about the fact that she basically made a deal for herself at the expense of the others. And Phyllis says, I would expect this from Billy, not from you. And he said, well, you know, gee, the mother of his children is just going to prison for something she actually didn't do or is going on trial for something she didn't do. She was just already victimized by JT and she's being victimized again but because of what you said. Phyllis, and she, Phyllis counteracts by saying, you know, what Nikki had already been arrested the story she told was not going to hold water and would have sent her to jail for first degree murder. And it wasn't first degree murder. She was protecting her daughter. Victoria was in imminent danger and Nikki had no choice but to act. And she told the police that. Nick said yes in such a way that you get immunity, yet the mother of his children, his mother and his sister are all going to trial for involuntary murder. Victoria, or <laughs> Phyllis says that wasn't part of the plan. She was supposed to be helping them. It was for their own good. And Nick says, yes, but you do this on the sly. You didn't tell anybody. You came out of the blue. So really, you were just trying to protect yourself. Just like always. Kyle shows up at the hospital and is wearing a doctor's coat. And he walks through the hallways to Lola's room. Ray tells Mia that there was new evidence in the case and that they found shoe prints and they analyzed them outside by the pool and that they belonged to a woman. They were size seven. Mia says, well, there's a lot of women who go by the house all on a regular basis and you know, servants and people visiting and even Dina, the, she has caregivers and nurses. And Ray says, no, there's something else too, that they found an earring, a diamond and an opal. And me goes, well, you know, that could have been lost at some other time. And Ray starts to talk about where that on the back, the name of the jeweler and that the jeweler had a blue awning and that they spent a lot of time there. And he said, you know, he didn't, couldn't really afford it at the time, but he wanted to get her something really special. And it was a real thing, the diamond and opal earring. And she said that she squealed when she opened it and that she would always cherish it. He walks over and opens her jewelry box, takes out the remaining earring. He walks over to her and says, you lied, Mia. Lola, Mia tells Ray that it was the fight with Abby that made her upset. And she said she just had fire in her blood and the things that Abby said to her just really ticked her off. And she went there, she just wanted to confront her. She didn't want to hurt her. And so she just ended, she saw her and she just pushed her and then ran. She didn't know it was Lola and she didn't know Lola had tripped and fell into the water. She hadn't realized and she never wanted to hurt her. Ray goes, that's my sister that's in the, in the ICU. And Mia says, she didn't know and she never meant for that to happen. Kyle is sitting by Lola's bedside and he says, he doesn't know what to say to her, just that he loves her even though he has said it before. And he knows that she loves him too because he knows she was there looking for him and that she hadn't given up on them. So he implores her to wake up so that they can get back together. Carrie is giving Jack a back massage by using her feet. And he says, how did you learn to do that? And she says she might have picked it up on one of the cosmetic conferences she went to. He gets up and 
He says he appreciates what she's doing for him, and but still worried about Nikki and Carrie says she understands that that Nikki's probably one of his favorite ex-wives and is a friend and is worried for all the women and that's really what the tension is all about. He also says that he's worried for Kyle as well that he lost his mother young and he never wanted to see that look on his face again but with Lola that looks back. Carrie kisses him and gives him a hug. Phyllis tells Nick that they had already made a pact not to say anything, but Nikki broke it by confessing to a murder to save Victor, and that the story wasn't believable anyway, so she told the truth. They had somehow found out that the four of them were involved to begin with, so she just basically filled in the blanks there. And she said, you know, you're first angry with me for lying, and now you're angry with me for telling the truth. And Nick said, no, I'm lying. I'm angry because you did it to save yourself. While well, Nikki, Victoria, and Sharon are in prison, are in jail right now because they were denied bail. And Nick says, "Are you? Can you honestly think that that would be okay with that?" And Phyllis basically says that, you know, you seem to think I'm the only one that doesn't need rescuing out of all the women that you know. And that sometimes she needs rescuing too, but sometimes she just has to rescue herself. Phyllis said that Victor was being charged with murder and you know, this might be a little bit better because it's not murder. And Victor goes, or uh, Nick says, yes, and you are going to let my father hang for it for months holding onto the fire poker, the only evidence in the case besides the, the clothes. And Phyllis said, that wasn't me. Somebody broke into my locker and put it in your parents' house. They broke in at least twice, if not more, with the bloody clothes and the fire poker to try to frame your father. And she goes, but somehow you're not focusing on them. You're focusing on me, and I don't really understand why. And he said, because this is supposed to be different this time. We're supposed to be honest with each other. And here you are, holding secrets and lying and doing stuff for yourself again. And he says, you know, we need to calm down or we need, we're done, you have to go. And she says, you're right, we have to calm down, this isn't getting us anywhere. And he says, no, you have to leave, leave my house and get out of my life. And he, he leaves the room. Kyle is sitting by Lola's bedside and he's telling her that she's so beautiful and he never gets to see her this way because she's always moving and doing things. And he says to her, you know, you're always worried that that's all I cared about was sex. And he goes, it wasn't about that. It was just about being intimate and being close to her. Just watching her wake up and holding her while she slept. And she, he hopes that, you know, he'll get the chance to do that. As he's sitting there, Arturo comes in and says, What are you doing here, Kyle? Grabs him. And Kyle says, What if it was Abby laying there? And he said, I would never do to Abby what you did to your sister. Or <laughs> did to my sister. And he pushes him out and says, Stay out of here. Or... More or less, he beat him up. Mia says again that she didn't mean to hurt Lola and that Ray is protector of the family and if this gets out, it, you know, could hurt them. And Ray says, you know, no, you hurt my sister. I can't let this go. Mia says she loves Ray. And he said he pulls out handcuffs and starts to arrest her. Tell starting to read her rights and Mia goes no you can't do this I'm pregnant well that's it for Feb Friday February 22nd your Monday I hope you enjoyed watching hit the 
like, subscribe so you can see more updates of Day Ahead. Why in our spoilers? Till next time, have a great weekend. Bye-bye.